trails for me is that hidden gem that we need to celebrate. I've been head of the United Way and vice president of universities and everything. That was all nice. That was all nice, but it was out there. Trails is real. Every kid in the place is real. So I, I was just a little kid growing up in North Toronto. It was a very different time. The neighborhood was all white. I knew nothing about poor people. At the church, we would sing Christmas carols and collect canned food for the downtown church workers. I knew nothing in those days about race. There was nothing about drugs or any of those kinds of issues. The biggest discipline issue in school was chewing gum. Like chewing gum, that's an issue today? No. It was a comfortable time. It was a simpler time. And there was a point where it changed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I have a dream today. It was the first time I'd seen Martin Luther King speak. I did not know a lot. I knew little, to be honest. But I had this sense that I could be a risk taker. So I was working in March break in high school and I saw a big Bristol board picture that said, plenty of work in the Caribbean, no pay. I got intrigued. I thought, maybe I could do that. I applied. Lo and behold, I was accepted. I was off to Trinidad. idea of leaving home, going on an airplane, never been on an airplane, going to another country where I knew not a soul should be terrifying. I didn't find that. I viewed it was a grand adventure. My salary was $10 a week, TT, which was equivalent of $2 Canadian. You have to earn it in terms of making friends, making relationships. And I hadn't been there six weeks when the head of the Y, who was from England, returned to England. And the board turned to me and said, you are now the executive director of the YMCA. I'm 19. What am I going to do on a budget? You know, we've got people paying room. I'm supposed to negotiate on food prices. All this is all new. I knew how to swim. I was a swimming instructor. There was an old US base swimming pool down at the waterfront. Hadn't been used in years. So off we go down and said, could we use it? They said, if you fix it up, it's yours. And it was sink or swim, and somehow I swam. Today, 150,000 kids have learned to swim in that pool. Through it, I got a scholarship to go to the YMCA Training College in Chicago. On the south side of Chicago where I lived, I was not particularly well-liked, but I worked in an all-black agency. Got to hear Martin Luther King speak, met with Jesse Jackson and came to our school, worked with a group of kids, brought them to Toronto to see this city, and we drove down that same street where I was born uh, in this van with 12 kids from the south side of Chicago. Our street had never seen anything like this. And I went to Mr. Gleason, the head of the Elliott Dorma Youth Center, and I said, you know, I want to live my life out on the race issue. And I remember he looked at me, he said, Gordon, you're a nice young fellow. We quite like you. But in the end, you're not going to change anything here. Go home. See what you can do there. The city of Toronto it was just starting issues around race. The Urban Alliance and race relations was getting started. And that issue sort of propelled me through my time in Toronto, in every place I worked. There's a difference between, to me, charity and justice. 
I wanted to come on the justice side. Charity, you do good and you feel good. But have you really changed anything? That to me was the real issue. It is clear that this event has produced outrage on the part of many sectors of Toronto's population. I was a politician. My son was a politician. We both left. We found another vehicle to have impact. I always believe in grand dreams. You know, you can't make a grand dream happen unless you have a grand dream. And that's what Hearst had. The question I get asked most often is, does trails work? And I guess the proof comes from the kids themselves. For example, a teacher coming to us and saying, I've been involved in the inner city for 15 years in the school system. And this is the only program that makes any difference at all in their lives. Thanks for having Trails. One of the things Jim did with me when he brought me into Trails, he brought me a book about the south side of Chicago. And it was the story of this mother and her kids growing up in one of the high-rise buildings, Robert Taylor Homes, and how the kids, by the time they were six, had seen murders. And that's not the life that I came from. It has been said that the youth, the children, are the most important asset in our society. When we invited him to Toronto, we said, we're going to form the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund, which is around the world, and we would like you to come and speak to 50,000 kids. To find that young people are so sensitive to come to the help of their young friends in South Africa shows that Canada, the people of Canada, are on their feet to be counted in fighting all forms of injustice. 45, 50,000 kids came to the Sky Dome. It was covered live on CBC across Canada. It was Canada's largest classroom. People everywhere saw it, and you could have heard a pin drop when he spoke. It was, in effect, a turning point, right? Some of them are huge, like that. That's a turning point. Some of them are small, which is the trail stuff, but they're real. Coming up to trails your first time, that's a bit terrifying, you know. There are mosquitoes. Swimming, canoeing, I didn't grow up with canoeing. Snowshoeing in the winter. Things that help change people's lives is what gives life meaning. The breakthrough is getting caught in that moment of a path in life, which can easily go in other directions that lead to drugs and crime. And there are a lot of forces pushing that based on where you come from and your background. So to counteract that, it's not two weeks at camp. It's the experience over four years of making friends and seeing people who are ready to be my friends for life. We have so many doors that are closed and Trails actually pushes them open. It gives people a fair shot. The whole idea of leveling the pain for you and changing the odds. The young voice is such an important voice. They see the world not as I see it. Some go on staff, some become alumni, some go on the board, some get new friends for trails. Leadership to me in the end is being able to touch both poles at the same time. That's really hard. It shows when people of difference come together, good things happen. I have been really more on the margins than in the mainstream of it. You know, I've come to the odd event here, I've showed up there, but in Jim, I think he was a person that would call and say, what do you think of this? What do you think of that? You've been around. You've seen stuff in places. 
And I think I was a sounding board for him. And I treasured it. He gave people second chances, sometimes third chances. It's, it's kind of his nature. How did he do this? He came out of Camp Almec, you know, private camp for the high-end kids. He loved it. He saw camping as a vehicle. But what he saw deeper was, it's not that experience isolated, it's that ongoing experience. And here you are 30 years later. I actually think Jim and I were cut from the same cloth, but we had different paths. And when we connected on those paths, we found, he would refer to it as we had a bromance. It was lovely. When we'd talk, we'd share, we'd go down. Men aren't good with each other. Jim and I hugged. He was a hugger. He hugged everybody. I sort of brought you in. There was a moment where Jim Hayhurst said, I've given it my best shot. It's time to move on for the next leadership. Helping people leave is not easy. But if you don't do it, things won't ever change. But then it shifted and was heading in a bit of another direction. The most generous donor ever to trails is a man by the name of Jack Cockwell. He was friends with Jim Hayhurst. He always views to give money to something, you need to have confidence in the person running the place. There was an opening and I thought, it's time to bring Jim back. He was on fire when he got back. We hired Mel. What a brilliant hire. Jack Cockwell gave a huge gift, huge. What was it? I have confidence in that person to get the job done. I actually believe the last three years of his life, he lived longer than he might have because he saw trails on the rise again. And it brought a great joy, a great joy to him. One of the things you get older is sometimes you lose touch. Jim kept in touch. He kept in touch with everybody. I mean, he, how did he phone everybody so often? You know, the day he died, he was online with everybody. You know, uh, 15 minutes before his life was to end, he wrote a little note. All it said was, I love you. Those last three weeks of Jim's life are one of the great treasures of my life. To chat with him every day and laugh, you know. That to me was one of the great things, the joy was sometimes in the laughter. We need hope. And I guess in the deepest sense, trails brings hope. It brings hope for kids that sometimes might not have been there. I mean, if you look hard at your family, if there was no trails, where, where would everyone be? Trails is here for the long haul. We're part of it. And I love this idea of the lifelong adventure of trails. I do believe grand dreams carry. And so when you say 15 years, 20 years from now, wouldn't it be nice if there was a trails in Vancouver and a trails in Montreal? It only takes one person to catch fire. There are other gyms out there. We need to catch them when they're young, not like me. The dues are never paid. In my mind, you just got to keep going. So here at 79, little pieces, little things. But the grandchildren, what gives you joy? Watching them learn to read. That's pretty good stuff. I mean, the pandemic was terrible, but for my wife and I, we got to spend so much time with this little two-year-old and three-year-old that taught him how to walk and play slinky and go on the stairs. Whoa, it was great.